Hello, my name is Nathan Sanders and I'm here with Mauricio Kino. We are both computer security majors here at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and this is our final project presentation for our class Introduction to Computer Security. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the honeypot and what it is and what we decided to do with it. So what is a honeypot? Well, the honeypot is a cybersecurity resource that has been designed to be to be probed and is designed to be vulnerable. And I know you're thinking a cybersecurity resource that's designed to be vulnerable. Well, the whole point of a honeypot is to deceive attackers and make them think it's real. So a honeypot mimics a totally real system and convinces attackers that they've successfully breached our security. And what it does once attackers are inside of inside of the system is it's first off an intrusion detector so it lets us know that we just had a vulnerability in our system and we can combat that as such and secondly it collects information on the attacker so it it monitors what they're doing what they use to get into our system what they're looking for all that sorts of thing and that is valuable information that we can't really get anywhere else why would we use a honeypot because you can't stop a determined attacker. I mean, our whole job is to prevent as many vulnerabilities as possible, but there's always new ways that attackers can exploit our system and get in. Even with major companies that spend billions of dollars on cybersecurity, there are still vulnerabilities in their system. And so sometimes the best defense is a good offense, and protecting yourself sometimes means biting back, so to speak. Um, and so with that, we create a honeypot because we want to learn from our attackers because they're going to teach us how to protect our system better than we can teach ourselves. With that, I'm going to pass it to Mauricio and he's going to start talking about um, the honeypot that we created. So when we first moved into design, we, we looked at the different types of honeypots and what software was available. We ended up choosing to go with the Cowrie software, um, which is a SSH honeypot due to the fact that it gave us the right amount of in interactivity that we were looking for. Um, our two main goals for design were we wanted to create a honeypot that looked real, and we also wanted to make sure that our system that hosted the honeypot was secure. These were two key factors to making this something that was both useful and did not prevent or did not present any risks for us. So the next phase that we moved into was implementation. Um, so here we utilized virtual machines to mimic the server. So we created two different virtual machines, one on multipass and one using Hyper-V, and we installed Ubuntu 18 server on there. With, with that, we were able to um, move into designing our honeypot, and we used a RSA key pair for security because it provides more security than a traditional password setup for SSH. Then we installed the Cowrie honeypot software, and from there, we moved to data collecting off of the VMs, and then configuring the honeypot to use that data. So we used a variety of commands uh, on the VMs to gather data that we could use to mimic those virtual machines on our actual honeypot. Once we had completed the implementation phase, we moved into testing. Here, our first goal as a pseudo attacker was to scan for open ports. So we used the nmap um, command to accomplish this. Once we were able to find out the open port that uh, the SSH server was running on, we used SSH to log into the root account. And the honeypot allowed us to enter any credentials and allowed us into the system. So from the hacker perspective, once again, our first goal after being logged in was to go treasure hunting. We decided to look through the directories and see what kind of valuable information we could find. We looked for um, any sensitive information or anything that might be of interest uh, from the attacker viewpoint. So after the testing phase, we moved into results and conclusion. The first step here was we looked at the logs. So uh, the logs presented a lot of detailed information for us. And two of the big takeaways from this honeypot software that we used 
were that we were able to connect and authenticate with SSH, which is huge because it provides interactivity and makes the system feel real. Um, using the this test from the hacker perspective, we also discovered that the Honeypot software provided a realistic file system, which gave an overall um, positive feel to the Honeypot technology. Now that we had um, discussed the results and conclusions, we'll move to the key references, which Nathan will take over. Perfect, thank you. So one of the biggest references we used for this project is a book by Chris Sanders, and it's Intrusion and Detection and Honeypots through Deception through Deception. Detection through deception. Sorry, I butchered that. Um, and so what this really helped us do is um, Chris talks about how there's over 80 honeypots in existence that um, companies are using secretly because if they admit that they're they're using honeypots, then um, then attackers are likely to stay away. And so they're very secret about honeypots that they use so that attackers are practically clueless when they get into the system and realize they're stuck in ooey gooey honey. Anyways, this book was a very good resource for us because it kind of had step-by-step -step processes for how to set up our honeypots that Mauricio explaining and the best way to pretty much do a testing phase to see the results of the honeypot. Here we have some of our image links and the last thing we wanted to say was um, thank you for listening. Um, connected with this presentation is a live demonstration and there should be a link for it in the description. Um, so thank you guys once again for listening. We are, um, my name is Nathan Sanders and here with me is Mauricio Aquino and we'll see you guys later. Thank you.